Hey everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV. My name is Dan Club. I'm joined by John Reed for the uncensored match build up ahead of Liverpool taking on Sheffield United at Anfield. And what is, of course, yet another massive game. We are down to the big nine. Yeah, the running has begun. Obviously, Liverpool looking to regain top spot after last night's events. Um, first and foremost, how are we? Hope we are well. I'm going to pop into the chat. Steve is late. Steve is very late, Lloyd. Steve is so late, he's not actually in the building at all tonight you're going to have to put up with myself John and a little bit of Eva a little bit later on I hope that's okay loads and loads of score predictions David Hunt I've seen your odds earlier as well mate um, we were only ever so slightly late but your money would have been safe let's put it that way loads and loads of score predictions already in the chat we'll come to all that a little bit later um, John first and foremost how are you mate you okay can't complain mate it's been a good week hasn't it yeah, not too bad, yeah. I mean, some drop points last night might have been better, but <laughs> yeah, other than that, yeah, not too bad. Like, things are shaping up pretty nicely. Looking forward to this? Yeah, I think it's it's a gift, isn't it, in some ways. Like, you know, we, the weekend was a gift, obviously, in terms of um, what happened after we played. But, um, yeah, you just you couldn't really ask for a better opposition, really. Could. I mean, even some of the other teams that are sort of in and around where they are at the minute uh, are playing well. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's... I'm also kind of happy it's a late kickoff, has a little bit of a, a European y vibe midweek, I guess. Yeah, under the lights at Anfield. Mm. And I've, I've seen a lot of people talking say, oh, this is more than likely, or most definitely now, depending on some, maybe depending on some mad fixture rescheduling. But this is probably the last game under the lights. I don't want to depress everyone before we even started, <laughs> but the last game under the lights in the Premier League in Jurgen Klopp's reign. So, yeah, it's got it's got that going for it 100%. Um, before I bring you a little bit, Jurgen Klopp, um, Etzlam has said, thanks very much for the super chat first as well. Um, Gomez goal tonight. I don't want to say I've given up hope on a Gomez goal, but I've given up thinking about a Gomez goal. I'm just going to let it be now. What mm. will be, when it happens, it happens, and I'll absolutely adore it when it does. I'd love it to have real significance, like just a goal in like a 4-0 win doesn't feel right. Mm. I feel like it needs to be a winner, and a winner between now and in the season would have loads and loads of significance, so that's what I'm all in for. Um, before we dive into the match itself, and obviously team news to come as well, um, Jurgen Klopp was speaking to the press ahead of this game, and he's given us a little update on the injury news, so here's that. Yeah, and Curtis, Curtis is, in, is, is in training and uh, full training and yeah, is in contention. Um, yeah, that's it pretty much. The other boys doing well. Joe and, uh, and Trent um, are together in a group, <laughs> which helps both. And but it looks like they next week from next week on they will be hopefully in parts of team training and then we will see the rest. Awesome. No, uh, but okay. Ali is, has been the goalkeeper coach, so I just see them through the fence. But that looks good as well. But um, I think in his mind as well, next week part parts of team training. Yeah, positive, eh? really positive. Um, yeah, Curtis Jones expects to be back involved in some capacity tonight. Likewise, potentially Andy Robertson as well. Not a million miles away from Joe Jota and Trent. And listen, we we've worked very hard to get ourselves in this position with a lot of key players missing. So welcoming them back over the next fortnight is going to be absolutely massive. And I seen Alison Becker today post on his Instagram story that he's in full recovery mode. He had them big sort of airbag type things mm. down his legs. So hopefully we're not too far away from seeing him back as well. But on tonight, John, I touched on it in a moment. Obviously, we earned the right to be where we are now over the weekend as opposed to sort of last night because obviously no favours last night for anyone. We don't expect any favours this stage of the season. We need to take care of our own business. But it's a little bit of a thankless task tonight for Liverpool ever so slightly because we are just kind of playing for parity, status quo a touch because mm. we're expected to win tonight just like Man City and Arsenal were expected to beat their respective opponents last night. But it does feel like we just need to come in and get the job done a little bit. It does, and you know all of these things obviously predicate on Liverpool doing the business, don't they? Um, you know it's easy, you know it's easy, and it can in some ways be a bit patronising to City and sort of go, it's it's an easy fix. We should be winning given the form and all that. You know, I'm in no way to do Sheffield down, but uh, given where they are in the league table, but you know you got to look at it, I guess, from sort of the, you know the the wider perspective. For me, I, I look at it and just think, well, it, you know, I don't fear necessarily Atalanta in the Europa League, so there's not really that hanging over us. This is an easier game; it's probably the easiest game we could have given the fixture list. Um, if we go out there and do the business, and you're Arsenal or City sat at home watching that and thinking we've got these big Champions League games on the horizon, mm -hmm. you know, and and also just other big teams they've got to go to like Villa and stuff and Spurs, yeah. um, you know, oh God, Liverpool have won again, you know, three more points and. And we're not reeling them in. 
Mm. Um, and you do have to, you know, you talk about professionalism a lot, obviously, in sort of, um, you know, top tier football. But I, I can't believe that if you're not one of those players, you're not sort of looking at it and thinking, running out of road a bit here. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? We've got five games and we're in a semi final, maybe, or we're looking at a semi final of a Champions mm. League. Like, my focus is maybe going slightly there. Um, so it's just one of those games for me where, like, you know, and, and also just a chance as well, just to sort of just cut loose a bit. I mean, Again, we're not wanting to do them down. You know, it's 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 a chance for a lot of those lads who are getting back to full fitness to sort of stretch their legs a bit. So yeah, there's definitely an element of that, and I think we will see a little bit of that tonight. Obviously, there's a rumored team which we won't discuss in too much detail just yet. We'll wait to a little bit closer to the confirmed team news. But yeah, there's definitely an element of potentially getting some minutes and some legs. I mentioned Curtis Jones already; he could well factor into that. I wanted to ask you, use the phrase "cut loose" there and skip to Malou in the chat as um, looking for well. Talking about not wanting or not going into this game, attempting to pile on the goals, and I get that. You are in danger of a game mm. like this. Obviously, we've seen the goal difference deficit now stretch out to eight last night with Arsenal. But it is just about that. You can't be complacent. You can't take anything for granted. You can't go into any game, regardless of Sheffield United's position. Somebody else mentioned in the chat they're just going to go for tonight at Sheffield United. They may well do. But from our perspective... How are you feeling about the the prospect of potentially putting a team to the sword? And does goal difference even come into the equation here? Or is it as simple as three points? And then let's say we are in a position with 20, 30 minutes to go. Do you just not let your foot off the pedals? Do you just go for the throat continually at the whole 90? Yeah, I think, I mean, the big one on your eyes, and obviously it's United at the weekend, and it's like, for me, we were very, we, f we fell very far like that in terms of the cup game, where we were great, but we just couldn't put stuff away and finish. Um, and we've, we've had that in games, you know, under this manager, obviously a slightly different team, but, you know, in games gone by where we've, we've blown teams away and then we've struggled in sort of two or three games after to sort of put it away and stuff. So I, I just want to see us go out there today and just be professional, you know, mm -hmm. just sort of keep a clean sheath do what we need to do to get the win. But also, you know, it's an opportunity, as I say, for them to sort of keep people fresh and sort of get people where they need to be. You know, Chris, uh, historically, used to always sort of talk about, like, how, you know, sort of make sure you peak at the right time, mm -hmm. having lads ready for sort of April and May. Um, and that's what we need, really. I want to see lads get sort of 60, 70 minutes tonight, maybe score, you know, maybe, you know, and maybe they could stay on and get a couple more goals or whatever, yeah. but take them off and have them hot and ready so that they hit the ground running at the weekend. No, absolutely. Yeah, it's a real mix in the comments as well. It's a fascinating sort of perspective. I don't think anyone's, like I say, taking this great game for granted. Certainly not Jurgen Klopp, but the players, and that's the most important thing, of course. But I think even the fans, a lot of them, a lot of the people in the chat and myself are just saying three points are kind of all that matters, essentially. However, if there is an opportunity late in the game to carry on scoring, in goals and to, to reduce that deficit somewhat then by all means take it because you're right I think we are getting in a much healthier position now squad wise where there is a bit of bench strength there you could bring on lads don't necessarily weaken the opportunity to score more goals so yeah I think you'll have one eye on minutes and legs one eye on Man United but possibly a quarter of an eye on this goal difference as well so it's a really fascinating one um, I will pop in and sort of a chat about the, the potential team um, the rumoured team is over on the board there John obviously Keith Kelleher Connor Brad Sadly, uh, Joel Kwanzaa carries on alongside Virgil van Dijk, Kostas Simikas, a midfield three, which we'll touch on in a bit more detail, of McAllister, Soboslai and Ryan Gravenberch, front three of Salah, Nunes and Louis Diaz. Um, Midfield-wise, obviously we know, Jürgen Klopp mentioned in the press that it was Taro Endo's picked up a bit of a knock. In there, on him, do you think it's just a no-risk situation? Because if there is a game whereby you potentially should be able to afford having that more attack-minded, forward-thinking midfield trio, this feels like it. Definitely. I mean, I it's mean, the words right out of my mouth. It's a, we, we should be dominating this game. You know, we should be, we're at home. And, you know, as I say, you look at where they are on the table and sort of how they performed on the road this season. We, we, we should be dominating this midfield. So... It's a shame because I think, you know, it's no secret, obviously, sort of, the, the, I think the love a lot of the fan base has, has, has got for Endo over the last six months in terms of what he's brought to the team. Mm. You hope it's not a long-term knock, or he, he, and by that I mean even a couple of a couple of games, mm. given where we are in terms of the season. But, you know, it, it's an opportunity, I think, for people like Gravenberch. We, we sort of know, we've seen McAllister at six, we know what Topper's like can do. Yeah. Um, but let's see what uh, Gravenberg can do a bit further forward. Well, it speaks to the importance of someone like Mataro Endo heading into what's to come and even including the weekend and that as well, that if there is even a slight risk that he has picked up something or he needs a little bit of a rest or the extra day might do him some good, you don't even risk him for tonight. You know what I mean? He stays clear of this game and that's certainly what it looks like in the rumoured teams, as I mentioned. So, yeah, I make your absolute spot on on that. Just moving a bit further back then, if that is to be the back four, obviously Kwanzaa preferred again to Canate. I suppose it, it speaks to what I speak 
speaking about a moment ago with if Canarte is not quite ready for 60, even 90 minutes, are you resting him for the weekend? And again, it's testament to how brilliant Joel Quantz has been that mm. nobody ever bats an island now when Quantz is in the team. No, we, we, I mean, we spoke, we, obviously, we, we did one of the previews for Brighton and we spoke about that a lot, didn't we, about Quanza. Mm. Um I just think it's one of them, isn't it? You, you want some consistency. I mean, you know, you don't want to knock Ibu in terms of, you know, any of his ability, but he hasn't been in the team as much this season, just in terms of, you know, being available. Kwanzaa has, and I'm sure he's got that relationship with Van Dijk in terms of, and that's something that they've cultivated over the season. Mm. So disturbing that, you know, you don't really want to uh, be breaking that up in, in, in a game that could be a potential banana skin. But also, you know, it's a, it's a different type of ask, isn't it? I think. I mean, I, I'm saying this like Kwanzaa isn't a big lad. He is a big lad. He can cope with you know sort of tough centre forwards. But having Ebu ready, maybe for some games coming a bit further up in the calendar, where you're going to need someone who can be a bit more physical, or maybe you know needs we need that sort of dynamism from centre half. You know, is it, no mean thing. No, absolutely not. No, and as you say, I think. Again, it just says that Quanta has been so, so outstanding that it feels like there's no game now that doesn't suit him. Obviously, played recently against Manchester City in a game of that magnitude and that importance. Mm. Nobody really minded that it was him, but he proved himself to be more than ready for that. And a lot of people in the chat talking about Harvey Elliott, um, Josh Gavin, Kai as well, um, basically questioning if that is to be the team. We'll find out in literally two minutes why he isn't starting. I mean, what do you make it out? Obviously, Graven Birch back to fitness just before the international break was included on the bench at Old Trafford, straight back into the team here at the first given opportunity, really, with Endo possibly being out. Do you think Harvey Elliott can feel a little bit hard done by if that's to be the case, especially given the fact of his birthday? today <laughs> I didn't know that <laughs> 21 today happy birthday Harvey um, you can finally stop playing for the 21s for England days. <laughs> um, I don't know really I mean I can see it both ways I think uh, you know it, I think we're right to be having a discussion around him um, I, I think he's fantastic I think my only concern if you can call it a concern around him is sort of what his best role is in the team. And I don't mean that in terms of where he plays. I just mean in, I think he still benefits from coming off the bench. You know, maybe sort of last 30, last 40 in matches as opposed to maybe starting. Yeah. But I've seen him have great games where he started and played 90, you know, so, it, you know, it, it's just about consistency, I guess. Um, I think with Graven Birch, it's just trying to get an asset, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like, we know what we're getting from Harvey Elliott. We know what he brings. We know his skill set. We know mm. he can score a goal. We know you can sort of put him in midfield. You can put him out on the wing. We know he's a known quantity, I guess. I think with Graven Birch, for the man, for the manager and the, the coaching staff, probably as much as for us as fans, he's still a bit of an unknown. He, we know he plays well in centre mid. We know he's got, you know, he's tidy on the ball. He's good at pressing, but we haven't really seen sort of what his his defined role is, if you like, in midfield. And yeah. this is the right type of game, I think, to sort of try and give him that confidence. No, I think you have to spot on that. It's a really interesting point as well because you're right. We we've seen Harvey Elliott now, albeit he's only literally turned 21 this morning. Like we know what he's all about. I think he's 108 games now into his Liverpool first team career. So yeah, we've learned not everything, but a lot of what there is to learn about Harvey Elliott. So you're right. I think Klopp's well versed in what he can bring. Graven Birch, it does feel like we're still trying to find out what his best role is, what systems best suit him, what teams coming up against the best suited to him, how he's best playing in the round. And I think that midfield three, if it is to be it, we'll find out in literally seconds. Just waiting for the actual tweet now. That feels like a really fluid midfield three and one that mm. can interchange a lot. I think McAllister will sort of be that deeper rolling. It'll be the six, he's done it before, but I don't think that'll necessarily be the case throughout the 90 minutes. I think they will interchange a lot and swap swap positions because they have the flexibility to do that. Moving forward ever so slightly while we wait for the team. Um, happy with that front three. That feels like the hot hand at the minute front three-wise, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You know, I mean, it, it's... it's there's not really much else we could do different, really, I guess, is the, but in terms of just form as well, I mean, they're all on fire, aren't they? Yeah. You know, Mo's obviously had a little problem with his shooting boots, maybe, in sort of the last couple of games, but it's, it's just a general link-up play, I think, against Brighton was sensational, so mm. you, you, you can't not have him on the pitch. Um, but Nunes and Diaz both, I mean, in different, in, and also in entirely different ways, you know, I, I thought Diaz was brilliant against Brighton, but not necessarily for sort of his goal output, if no. you like, it, it just does just his application, and, you know, it's just, it's. It, I think they, they finally got it. You know, we, we were watching this team sort of 12 months ago and sometimes seeing that front three and going, this doesn't really click. Like, they mm. don't sort of know where each other wants to be. Um, or maybe like Nunes and Salah work well together, but, you know, Diaz is isolated kind of thing. Now you sort of seeing it be fluid. And as you say, taking that in combination with the midfield in terms of, you know, that dynamism they bring and they're all sort of comfortable in each each, each other's positions. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it's sort of what you want from a team, isn't it? You know, you never quite know which one's going to hit you. And, you know, you might gang up on, say, three or four of them, but then, you know, someone's bursting from deep and scores a goal. So mm -hmm. um, I can't wait for it. And I just think, you know, 
whatever happens, I just think Nunes is, is just quality, you know, in the yeah. sense of he's just always good value to watch some of the stuff he does on the pitch. But also, I just think he's going to have, he, he thrives under sort of like, you know, these atmospheres at home, his his fans up in the stands, but yeah. also like, you know, a sort of big game. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, we, have, we do have team um, news confirmed. It is a little... Couple of change actually from what we've seen. Um, Keith Keller in goal, uh, Joe Gomez, Virgil van Dijk, Ibu Canate, Louis Diaz, Dom Sabozlai, Darwin Nunes, the aforementioned, Alexi McAllister, Mo Salah, Ryan Gravenberch, and Connor Bradley. So Gravenberch does start. He is the uh, front and centre of the graphic there. The graphic that Liverpool continue to do in the numerical order, um, despite my numerous emails to everyone at Liverpool <laughs> Football Club for them to stop that. Because it's really, really annoying. Especially when Joe Gomez in the team who can basically play like six positions. And he's just put there, and that could mean anything. That looks like he's playing right back. He definitely isn't playing right back. Um, subs wise, Adrian, Curtis Jones, Cody Gakpo, Harvey Elliott, the birthday boy, Costa Simicas, Andy Robertson back from his little spell on the sidelines. Bobby Clark, Jaden Dans is also involved in the bench, and Jarrell Quantas. And no Bataro Endo whatsoever um, in the squad today which again hopefully doesn't mean he's ruled out ahead of the weekend hopefully it means he is back in contention for that and it's nothing more than a small knock keeping him out of tonight sound okay now there's a confirmed team a um, couple of changes than what we predicted um, happy with that? yeah I, I don't think you can't be I think um, you know as you say sort of the endo stuff sort of springs of a caution but um, you know, the, it's a strong team. It's a team, obviously, that should be getting the results. Um, but also in terms of the subs as well, you know, it, it's nice to see sort of Jones back in the mix. Mm. Um, I'll be surprised if Gakpo doesn't get on the pitch at some point in yeah. terms of, I think, he, you know, he needs a bit of a run out, if you like. Um, and it's it, they're all strong. You know, um, the sort of, the, the strength of this season, I think, has been the subs for us. You know, we, we, we've managed that sort of 16, 17, 18 players really mm-hmm. well. In terms of all, giving them all minutes and keeping keeping us fresh over ninety minutes on the pitch, yeah. Um, so yeah, very happy. No, I, likewise as well. And somebody here mentioned of who we were bigging up Joel Concert a moment ago. Rightfully so, by the way, he's been absolutely outstanding. But Ibu Kanate is, I think, everyone's first choice centre half. The only sort of reason you don't play him is if there's a little bit of caution involved with his fitness and stuff like that. And obviously, with big game at the weekend and even bigger games to come further down the line as well, you want to make sure you've got the best version of Ibu Kanate available to you. And sometimes, unfortunately, with a player like that, I feel like the best version of Ibu Kanate is only found by him not playing certain games and resting mm. certain times. So it could have been tonight. Obviously, it's not. He's starting the game, which I'm more than happy with because he's a wonderful, wonderful footballer and he's got incredible, incredible defensive ability. Um, you mentioned there, uh, good to see Curtis Jones back good to Andy Robertson back on the bench and the bench generally actually is a lot stronger than it has been at certain times this season obviously still some youth on there with Quanta, Dan's Bobby Clark in particular but it does feel like if this game isn't going in the right direction or in fact even if it is and you do need to get some lads off we need to get some minutes in some different lads there's loads and loads of options in which to do it there yeah, you know, I mean, it's great to see that the manager still takes that so seriously. I mean, I think, you know, particularly given where we are in the season, it's it's very easy, isn't it? That, you know, he gets to walk away from all these problems, <laughs> doesn't he? Yeah. You know, um, he gets to say, you know, you know, I've got, I've got all these sports science lads who have hired great, but, you know, I, I need such and such a person because mm-hmm. I've only got eight games left to win a league. Um, but it's great that he still follows it and it's great that, you know, he, sort of what he says is, 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 you know, is his word and that, you know, that it's opportunity based and stuff. Yeah. Um, the benches, you know, as you say, it's there's a lot of lads there who are hungry. There's a lot of lads there who you, you feel confident in. I think it's the main thing for me. I just think, you know, I know obviously there's been sort of a lot of online chat around Gakpo and his contributions and stuff, but, you know, you're not looking at any of those lads who are on the bench, you know, probably other than maybe the goalie mm. and, and thinking I'm unhappy if any of them come on and play any number of minutes. You know, even Simicast, there's a bit sort of under him around um, around Christmas and stuff when, when Robbo was injured. And I think that, alleviated a lot of fears that he can play and play well um so you know it's just good isn't it it's like it's it's weird i think actually again you said it a few weeks ago on a show we were on where it, we've just had this sort of depth creep up on us that yeah. we've suddenly got lots of players who were all really really good and you're looking at like an arsenal or a city and suddenly thinking you've got an 11 and that's it really yeah. and you're running them into the ground so you know no, it bodes well, it certainly does, as I mentioned earlier on the show. Hopefully a couple more lads to add back into that equation as well over the coming coming days and weeks. Um, quick look at the Sheffield United side as well for tonight. Um, they've named Gerbic in goal, which is a change from the game at their place. It was uh, Fodringham, wasn't it? He's on the bench tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trusty, who you can always rely upon, of course. Um, Hamer, Bevis and Diaz on loan for Villarreal. Bevis and Diaz, um, formerly of Blackburn, of course. Um, 
Ahmed Hozic, Robinson, as we know, well, mm-hmm. Jack Robinson, um, Omar Bogle, Vinny Souza, his name can't be Vinny, it must be Vinicius, um, R. Blaster, who hits a ball dead hard, McAtee, and Mason Holgate. Um, say his name on the ref. The, yeah, Mason Holgate. I, I was going to say something horrendous there about Mason Holgate, but I won't. It wasn't like, you know, abusive, just I just don't like him, <laughs> Dave Ross, to be honest, um, and he's playing. So, yeah, um, yeah, I mean, listen... Sheffield United are what they are. We've, we've said it already in the show. Like they are struggling. This is if if it hasn't if the ship hasn't already sailed on their survival hopes. This feels like last chance saloon. Are they going to come and have a go? Are they going to come put ten men behind the ball? What are you expecting for them? I think Chris Wilder would absolutely love to spoil the party. Seems to that type mm-hmm. to me. Are you envisaging anything other than a really defensive, negative, we're going to try and come and spoil the party type situation for them? Do you think they will try and come at us or what, what do you think they're going to do? Uh, it's a weird one because I think for him, I think a good a good game is sort of being competitive, but not necessarily obviously, like, you know, I think I'll clash in Liverpool and I think he'd be realistic about that as well, by the way. Yeah. Um, but I think being competitive and, and basically not getting a hiding, I think... It sounds weird saying, you know, if you could say to him, would you shake hands on sort of a two or a three nil now? Would yeah. You, would you yeah. take it? But I, I think if he if he gets to walk off the pitch full time and go, yeah, we got beats. A bit like Luton last night against mm. Arsenal. Yeah, because they put up a very, especially given the fact they had 13 players that were injured. And again, I'm not taking anything for granted. I need to caveat that every time we speak like this. But they, I think Rob Edwards would have walked off pretty proud of his team's mm. effort. Again, especially with the amount of absentees that they had. Maybe Sheffield United have been in a similar boat. Certainly coming to Anfield, everything at stake and stuff like that. So, yeah, let's hope for you're right. But again, some Daniel Buttery makes the point here. Ben Berrett and Diaz. Yeah, listen, his move to Villarreal in the Liga didn't really work out for him, but he was prolific in the Championship and, mm. you know, possesses a real goal for it. so we do need to be careful and Liverpool have been relatively porous when it comes to conceding chances and we have to rely on obviously Allison and Kelleher more, more recently we have conceded goals so don't want any any problems tonight any heart failures or any real issues you know what I mean I'd like a nice straightforward win but Generally speaking, we don't have them. That's not how it works, being a Liverpool fan more often than not, is it? Let's be frank about it. Um, start getting your score predictions in now. I will come to, to you, Jay, for one of them in a minute as well. But yeah, we, we've already kind of touched upon it already. But in terms of how you expect Liverpool to go out of the business tonight, we have been sort of slow starters at times of season. Even on the weekend, we've seen that against Brighton. Are you expecting or are you hoping for a more positive front footed start and us to really sort of take the ascendancy of this game from the outset? Yeah, I think I just want to see us be professional, really. I just think, like, you know, again, it's, it can sound like you're, you, you're being a bit patronising, but it's like, like we, we should we should be winning the midfield battle, we should be winning the battle up front, and we should just be putting goals in. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want to see us go out there and just, you know, it, it, it's the hallmark of what City have done to win the league for the last two or three years, and it's the thing that you hate, that you just periodically check your phone and you're 20 minutes into a match and it's, oh, it's 2-0 City. Yeah. And that, that's what I want to see from us, really. Yeah. Um, and that, that again, not, not in any way to sort of do down Sheffield United. I just want us to go out there and just, just hit the ground running. And sort of show as well, I think, for us as fans, that like we're in sort of a comfortable spot. Because I think, you know, as you say, like the, how the weekend went in terms of the fixtures and stuff and the results, we've got to, I've got to go out there tonight and win. But I, I want that to be the thing. I want the narrative to always just be that Liverpool keep winning and keep finding a way, mm. you know, and even though no matter how good Arsenal's form is, no matter how good City are as a team on paper, that, mm. you know, they've got to go to Villa and get something to say, kind of thing. It's, you, you need it, you need the ball to always be in their court. and just like, look, we're just going to keep winning, you know, and that's yeah. that. Yeah, no, absolutely right, 100%. Yeah, because it can eventually, hopefully, become demoralising maybe not necessarily for Man City because they are so mm. close and distanced at this with us in particular mm. but for maybe something like Arsenal obviously crumbled at the first sign of pressure last season if they see that Ulls and Manchester City simply aren't going away and no matter what they do we're just going to keep winning our games who knows at some point further down the line they might crack especially when games and the intensity of games come thick and fast because you mentioned earlier on they've got big European nights ahead of them as well um, before we wrap up there's been loads of score predictions coming in as well including this from Quad Bob. thank you very much um, I did not realise I said the word caveat so much um, somebody <laughs> pointed it out to me I apologise but listen we've all got our things haven't we I did want to touch upon dead quickly um, Sheffield United's recent results actually because they've been conceding shipping some goals might be a better way to put it to be honest with you and they were beaten five by Brighton they obviously got a man sent off and not only one nil by Wolves but six by Arsenal sort of underline the point they were making 2-2 two, two with Bournemouth 3-3 three, three of the weekend um, with Fulham and that was when they led 3-1 in that game at one point so they aren't exactly watertight at the back to use yet another water reference so there is definitely opportunity for Liverpool to, to create some chances here let's put it that way whether they turn into goals or not remains to be seen however 
So Yurit believes it'll be a 20 nil with Kelleher to switch positions with Nunes and scores all 20. I'll be honest, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, Cody Wilkie, however, says 9 nil. I would love us to do something like that, I really would. Um, plus three, yeah, goals glow would be nice. Um, okay, I think that's, we'll keep getting score predictions as we go, but I'm going to get one from you now instead. I think it'll be a straightforward 3 nil. 3 I think we get to three and we just go... Good Call here. it quits. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to can carry on. Keep trying to claw back some goal difference. You've done there. I mean, you can talk, you, you can you can talk me into um sort of I guess sort of mo going for the golden boot. But um, I'm haunted. I, actually, I was away at the weekend and I was talking with a friend who's, who's a red uh, about Palace in 1914 and the goal difference. <laughs> Somebody mentioned that before, and I nearly mentioned it. I think it was yesterday on a news show. Anyone who's here will know it. Literally was in my mind, mm. and then it was in my mind twenty minutes ago as well when I mentioned the goals. You, you shouldn't. No one should say it out loud. It's like the thing that you can't say. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely been a thing that I've considered. But it terrifies me. Absolutely terrifies me. So ultimately, I'll come back to it win the game and then potentially deal with a goal difference thing after only potentially if necessary um, so now we've had four from Coach Rossi um, Quad, but yeah I think Sheffield United have took the handbrake off ever so slightly because ultimately they weren't winning games with low blocks and trying to nick them so why mm. not just try to score, score some goals on the way and have some fun with it so yeah it does feel like that A76J says 5-2 Liverpool um, Lou Dog with the ever ever Predictable. 1 0 down the first 15 minutes, come back and win 4 1. Not tonight, please God. Um, Richard Ward, Premier League record score to be broken tonight. So we'll obviously win 1 0. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get a Domley, cricket score, sorry, Blazers is what it is. Yeah, okay, uh, it's going to be so many hat tricks today, says Cody. Ah, listen, I am going to say 4 0 Liverpool with Darwin Nunes scoring two, Mo Salah scoring one, and. Dom Sabozlai on the score sheet as well. Mm. Free, free kick or open? No, no, long range, long range mm. whammer. Um, any goal scores from you before we wrap up? Um, I, I think Nunes is going to have a field day. Okay. Um, and I think, obviously, you, you can't never bat against Mo, can you? No, scoring. you cannot. No, and again, you mentioned a moment ago, he's still got, I reckon, at least one eye on hunting down Erling Haaland at the top of the goal scoring chart. Um, sound? Uh, Robert says 5-1. Loads more score predictions coming in. Um, I will be back in half an hour with the watch along with Evel alongside me at that point. Before I go, though, however, I do need to tell everybody that if you head over to redmenplus.com now and sign up as a captain, yearly subscriber, and use the code RACE, you will get a year's worth of content for half price. What's not to love about that? And I'll be honest with you, there's literally no better time to do it because we are in the midst of what is about to be an incredible title race as the Reds hunt down the Premier League and hopefully the Europa League as well. So what a better time to do it. And also, there's a small matter of us needing a new footy manager, but we'll worry about that another time. And for now, it's all about the Reds and it's all about three points. Um, sound? Boss? Nice one. Hattrick Gomez 4-1. 3-1 Nunes, Maca Virgil. We're saving our 7 0 for United the weekend. We owe them one. Uh, honest to God, we <laughs> owe them one. Um, and a Sobo tricycle kick goal. Someone's going to need to explain to me what a tricycle goal is. Um, Stick says 7 0. Mr. James 420 says 5 0. Darwin Hattie, Graven Birch, and Vir- a lot of people saying Virgil's going to score tonight. He scored at their place, so let's see. And finally, Caffle G5 of a 3 1. The Probably the most common scoreline this season, that, so you might well be right. Sound, all done. Um, Unturned the match build up. I'll be back in half an hour, something for the watch along. Take it easy, see you then. Thank you so very, very much for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like. Uh, the season is now well underway. If you need extra Red Men content, be it podcasts, videos, documentaries, interviews, and general shows, fill your boots on redmenplus.com today. <laughs>